Sometimes I'm elated at the idea of full surrender and abidance in the self, but then an immediate tension pulls me back into a strong belief in lack and a concern that the saying, life takes care of life, won't apply to me. I attended your Essence of Prayer retreat and was grateful for the understanding that abidance is true prayer, but was confused that many of the texts offered contained a strong subject-object context. God in my head, Father to me, I raised my whole being, etc. So my question is, how do I keep faith that all will be well? And to whom do I pray when in need of solace? Okay. Graham, when, when, when it comes to poetry, we should not demand that the poet uses words in too literal or rational a way. The, the words of a of the of, of of a poem don't operate on the rational mind. They they operate at, at a deeper level, and the same is true of a prayer. It, nearly all the the um, devotional literature of the great religious and spiritual traditions is couched in subject object relationship. Uh, Rumi, for example, who evidently knew full well that his being was God's being. In other words, that there was no such thing as his being. There was just God's being shining in himself as his knowledge of his own being. And yet he wrote a traditional devotional poetry and prayers in the existence of your love I become non-existent. This non-existence linked to you is better than anything I ever found in existence. This is, this is poetry. It's using the conventional subject-object relationship. It's just a, a form. It, it's just a, um, a way of speaking. It, it's, it's almost impossible. In fact, it, it is impossible as I've said many times before, if we want to speak the absolute truth, we should remain silent. Even these very, I hope, these clean, clear lines of, of, of reasoning that, that, that we use here, one could find fault in them if one wanted to, if one was so inclined. So the main thing to understand is that the, the God to whom we might pray, if we're inclined to pray in words like that, the God to whom one might pray is the God that we are. It is a prayer of ourself to ourself, couched in, in the limitations of language. I guess my question then would be, do we pray at all? Do we just sit in abidance? Um, Graham, sitting in abidance, abiding as being, is the ultimate prayer. Liberate your idea of prayer from the belief that it is something that is contained in words or expressed in words. It might be, but that's really the, the outer form of prayer. And, and I don't mean any criticism of it. it, it, it it's beautiful to, to to pray with words, but that's really the it, it's the prelude to true prayer, which is an attitude of the heart, not something we speak with, with the mouth. So abidance, being knowingly the presence of awareness or resting in being is the highest form of prayer. That's why. Remember, God's name is I am. What, what, does, what does the words I am signify? They, they, are, they are the first form, the first name that is given to being. If being was to, if we were to say to being, tell us something about yourself. If it could speak, it would say I am. 
So I am is the name of being. Therefore, the thought I am is, is I am is, is the divine name. I is the divine name. One only needs sound it once. It's the highest mantra. You sound it once and then you, you abide in that to which it refers. That is the ultimate prayer. So if you're not, I, 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 I'm a, as you know, Graham, I, I'm a closet Sufi. I love these prayers. Father, to thee, I offer my whole being a, 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 a vessel emptied of self. Accept, Lord, this my emptiness and so fill me with thyself. I, I, I love this because it's... Uh, but if you don't, if it provokes resistance in you, then, then just bypass it. Go, go straight. No, well, the straight. The strange thing is, it doesn't. So I use it now. Oh, I perfect. Now, but it's just I suddenly went. Well, who am I praying to? If <laughs> you, 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 that, you, you, that's too literal a question. You, you, understand? You are the one you are praying to. It, it's a, it's a way of speaking to yourself. It's a way of uh, personifying yourself so that you feel you can in some ways in your mind, objectify yourself and have a relationship with that. But in, at a certain point, that has to go so that you feel you are the being that you pray to. L remember the beautiful prayer of the Italian monk, Lord, thou art the love with which I love thee. He was a, a monk who was directing his love towards God. This was his main practice, directing his love towards God. And then suddenly this beautiful revelation that God is not, doesn't exist as an object of his love. God is the very love that the devotee thought was his. The devotee thought, I am taking my love and I am giving it to God. No, he suddenly realized God is the very love. And in which case, where could one direct that love? It is already that towards which. Love only love. It is already that to which we would direct our love. So this beautiful phrase, Lord, thou art the love with which I worship thee, with, it, with, with which I love thee. It's, but he probably still went on with his with his prayers and his devotions. 